What's up, everyone? I'm so excited to be back bringing you another episode of We Are Angel City. This week's episode is one unlike any other because joining me is none other than Angel City owner and former U.S. Women's National Team player, Saskia Weber. Saskia, how are we doing today? We are good. We're good. I got my new light. I'm, I'm looking good and fresh. There you go. Yeah, you are. Look at us. We're matching, repping Angel City like we know how. Absolutely. I love my, t- I love my swag. I got three dogs. They say okay. hi too. They love it's it It's okay. Too. I had to lock my dog in my bedroom across the house because he has an <laughs> eruption bark. So I feel you. We know the dogs are here. It's 2020. Yeah. Um, Saskia, to kick these off, we like to do something fun. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Oh, God. To describe yourself or tell the audience a little about you. You only have 30 seconds. You'll see me put my hand up with a five when you have five left. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm pulling up my timer. And ready, yeah. set, go. Um, Saskia Weber, born in Princeton, New Jersey, to a crazy hooligan Dutch mother, African-American father. Um, if you know me, you know I am consistently full of energy, um, the life of the party, <laughs> um, although that's slowing down now with corona. So I'm just the life of the party around the house with my dogs. I played soccer on the U.S. team for 10 years, um, played pro around the world, and now a just absolutely proud co-owner of Angel City. Okay. That was, that was pretty good. I feel like you, uh, you did, you did yourself, you did yourself a little bit of justice, but there's so much more to you. Okay. Than just those 30 well, seconds. 30 okay. seconds. Okay. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. So in the short time, like I've gotten to know you, I can tell how passionate you are about everything you do. I think you and I are built from the same cloth a little bit in that regard. We're both very passionate women about what we do and someone else who is really passionate and this might hit home for you a little bit, but was Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. And you know, it's been a couple weeks since her passing now, and you were one of the first ones to reach out to Angel City and say like, I can't believe this happened, you know, and I could tell that it really hit hard for you. Why do you think her death hit you so hard? She's just an icon. We, would be, we wouldn't be here without her. Right. We wouldn't, I wouldn't be a co-owner of Angel City. We probably wouldn't have a pro women's soccer league, Um, Title IX. I mean, everything that has given me my opportunities in life as a woman, as um, an African-American woman, um, is because of her battle and her fight and everything she did um, for all of us, and even before I was born. And so, you know, when you lose somebody like that, it really just resonates on you know, what am I doing to, to carry that ch- torch and um, what a loss. It's right. one of those people you wish you could be around forever. And, and as we, you know, mourn the loss of her, we also can celebrate the life she lived. Absolutely. So what, what characteristics of her do you think that as a society we can kind of strive towards and even within Angel City that we can grow this club towards? Just her fight. Never say, never, never give up, never say die. And just, gosh, knowing the right path, the truth, the right, like what's honest, what's right, what's moral, and especially in this time and everything, um, she just, she exemplified what we all should strive to be and what, you know, we want our kids to be, what I want to be. Um, and she's just a role model. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned continuing to fight. And this year in 2020, like we have been fighting like hell (laughs) and (laughs) it's, it's been a year. It's been a year. And I know, I know you can agree to that. So what so far has 2020 taught you? There's some things I actually love about 2020. I know that's really, you know, hard to say, but uh, no, I'm I'm right there with you. The connections that we have with people now. I think that what had started to happen was, you know, everybody's on text and um, that's how people were communicating when I grew up in a time that, you know, you use the telephone um, but, <laughs> and stuff. And just now with, with everybody being on lockdown, with 2020 being the way it was, it's just the way to communicate is to reach out, is to use Zoom, is, you know, to use whatever form. And now, like, I've been able to do, like, appearances for teams in Iowa and like reconnect with people that I haven't seen in years and years and years. And, um, and I think that has been such a, 
a weird gift in an awful time. Um, and I, I hope that doesn't go away um, when the world opens back up. This is one part of this that I hope we keep moving forward and taking with us is our, connect, our reconnection with even our families, with everybody, no matter where you are. What's one moment during this 2020 that someone has reached out to you and reconnected with you that really sticks out and meant a lot to you? Oh, wow. What isn't? Um, <laughs> honestly, what, like there's been so many conversations with so many people. I think on the soccer side, you know, I reconnected with, um, with the podcast I do, Franz Hoek, who's one of the greatest goalkeeper coaches in history and in the world. And he was my mentor when I was 16 years old. I went over to Holland to train with him and to sit and have a two hour conversation with him and him like reminisce about things. He, he thought about my character when I was 16 years old, which we won't date me was a very long time ago, but just, it wasn't that long. <laughs> You're so sweet. But to reconnect with people, like with people that really um, drove my career. Um, Tim Mulqueen, I got, got to talk to who I haven't talked, seen or talked to since I was in college. Same with Paul Blodgett. So these are people that like really shaped me as a, as a player and the person that I am and to be able to like face to face with them in a sense and, and reconnect that they've been amazing conversations for me. How can we, you know, as a club, as just people supporting Angel City, make things better for this next generation, especially of young girls? I think to be to be accessible and visual, um, and it, it doesn't just mean the athletes. It's it's you know whether it's your actresses or your you know financial gurus yeah. that are part of us and everything. Like you can be any anything, and to show our success, to be like I said, to be accessible, to get out in the grassroots community. Um, you know we're not sitting at the top of a mountain where you can't reach and you can't get to us. Um, right. you know, shoot me, shoot me an email, let's chat, you know, <laughs> whatever, but it's, you know, I think that's incredibly important that we do that and that we are doing that. Right. And for you, you know, growing up, you mentioned being from New Jersey, starting soccer when you're Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to yeah. Jersey. Jersey, you have to, it's, the <laughs> it's something in the water. It's all goalkeepers are from New Jersey. <laughs> but starting out for you, and even many can say up until recently, there wasn't a ton of black women representation right. for you to look up to. So how did you really decide to make being a professional soccer player your first career? I think it, you know, it, it was very different back then. And so I think it, it developed on its own. I was incredibly supported by my family and still are, just to be, I was an athlete. I came from a very athletic family. I was a, um, you know, big lacrosse player. I was, I was a swimmer. Um, I did everything. Get out of the house, basically. <laughs> Get out of the house. And I was always my brother's like extra player. So um, I think that it just kind of formed on its own. And when the reality started to hit of the national team when I was in high school and, and traveling, which, you know, I love to travel. I mean, it's probably the one thing I miss about not playing for the team anymore or playing pro is I love traveling. And so, um, it just kind of grew. And then just having that support of my family, do what, do what you, makes you happy, do what you want to do. There were times that I was like, that I was miserable just because I was like stressed or feeling pressure. And mom's like, well, if you don't want to play anymore, don't play anymore, you know, but do what you love. And to just have that kind of stability and backing and of my community and everything, just, it kind of, it kind of pushes you into that direction without, without fear of failure. Um, right. Just, just following what you love. Yeah. And you definitely did. You said 10 years with the U.S. Women's National Team is a hell of a thing to be proud of. Especially when but... you're sitting behind Brian. So... <laughs> Hey, hey, you had, I'll take you. You had, your, you had so many great moments with the U.S. Women's National Team. But I got to know, through, given all your experiences with the team, everything you encountered, what was it about all those experiences collectively or if you have any individual moments that made you want to do what you're doing now in your post-playing career? Um. If you haven't, met, if you haven't met the 99ers it's kind of, <laughs> or all of them, it's kind of hard not to keep going. I mean, we are such a family and we support each other. And, and we, uh, the majority of us, pretty much all of us went through this, these, this time together. 
whether it was like Mia and them with the 91 team. But then even for me, I was in camp then. And so like, this was a family and it still is. I mean, I mean, I could show you it's a group text and we hear from everybody every day in some, form, you know, and you, you know, you just, it's what I do best soccer and um, coaching and wanting, you know, wanting to be role model. I'm one of those people that never agree with when you reach it, when you're an athlete and you reach a certain amount of success and stuff to turn around and be like, I'm not a role model is something I absolutely don't agree with. I think it comes with the territory. I'm proud of it. Um, I know we all are. And I know that we don't take for granted that with our success, we have the ability to, to help change, change the world. Right. Um, and what, which is what we're doing right now. And even in little ways, um, that's, that's a responsibility I'm happy to take on. And, um, I can imagine anybody wanting to turn their back on that. One of those things that people love to remember about you, Saskia, was your red, white, and blue hair yes. from that 99 year. <laughs> so tell me the story. I know you've probably told it a lot. No. But for anyone, that's, <laughs> anyone that's new to the women's soccer world listening, Tell us the story behind the red, white, and blue hair. Okay, so, and I'm looking over my computer right now. I'm not going to pull it down, but there's actually a photo of us in the game in, in, in uh, Chicago, and Mia is sliding in after she scores the goal, and I'm leaning down, Sarah's leaning down, Lori, Danielle, I think, and Tish is there. We all have our hair painted. All of us. <laughs> I just want everybody to know. My hair just was just... remind everyone. Just that remind Astrid. you. Everybody did. Um, and it was just something that, like, a couple of the other... I don't know. Like, the, one of the two of the other teams had done, and we just did it as well. It was just... It kind of grew. But my hair was pulled so tight in a ponytail that my colors were kind of, like, more vibrant, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And so then I did it again the next game. and. Um, Christy Rampone, Captain America, she's my stylist, and I always have to give her the shout out. Her mother would bring over the hair dye color, which took about five showers after it came to get out. Um, and we would stencil it, and we would do everything together. And, um, and then one day I came down, I think it was our DC game against Germany, and I came down to the um, pregame, and my hair wasn't done. And they somebody was like that didn't go over well did it no and i because <laughs> I, I didn't want i didn't want this attention there was a photo that had come out like number one thing to look out like from ap mm -hmm. was what color hair is saskia can have and that's not the attention i wanted the attention was about our team and stuff so i came down without it done i was like well i don't you know and mm -hmm. somebody was like i think it was julie or somebody was like catch your butt back upstairs <laughs> do your hair so, so did it become like a superstitious thing at that yeah, point yeah absolutely yep yeah, absolutely. It's like, you can't not do it. This is like part of, you know, our, yes, our superstition pregame, you know, <laughs> and actually me and Christy went back upstairs and did it. But the windows that she'll tell this story too. the windows to our my hotel room were they didn't open. And I'm sitting there in a chair and I look up and Christy's face is blue and my face is blue. And we both almost <laughs> passed out because of the spray. And oh my goodness. I swear, we almost didn't make that game. And we went running and like you could crack the windows like this much and we're both like hanging out. We had to open the hotel room door, literally almost on the floor. You almost, we were almost did not, we would not have made the game. <laughs> But, wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that, that's dedication. It was, it was. And then if you see in the final, if you see on, on the podium, my hair looks like blonde. But actually on the field after we won, Christy took a bottle of gold spray paint and on the field spray paint in my whole head. So it's actually gold. Yep. That's amazing. Little facts for you. <laughs> that's amazing. Those are the times that, you know, people really harp on social media, but I wish it was around because I would have loved to just seen that moment being captured because I know that, that that's something that would have been a viral moment. It just would have, whether you wanted the attention for it or not, yeah, we were that became a the, story. Yeah, after we were jogging around the field, Chrissy came running up with the, the <laughs> spray bottle. She's like, bend over, and we're in the middle of 90,000 people in the Rose Bowl, and she's like, shh, shh gold. I, I think <laughs> what I love the most about that is she was so confident in y'all that she had the gold spray paint yeah. ready. Absolutely. Think about that. It wasn't, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't silver or bronze. It right. Was gold she had the gold spray paint ready. <laughs> yeah. I 
love that that's confidence. A great point, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love that confidence that, you know, that's something that the 99 team has just carried and just oozed out at every nook and cranny of women's soccer since then. And that's what everyone admires so much about what all of you have done and continue to do. Um, I do have one more, or really two more questions sure. about this time. I want to go back to 1995, World Cup group uh -huh. stage versus <laughs> Norway. Do you know where I'm going with this? Yes. Tell me your <laughs> thoughts. What was going through your mind when Mia Hamm had to take over at goalie? And nobody's, because y'all were ever asked me that question. Really? Yes. I want to know what was, that was my first thing when I, what you know, Sasuke heard about thinking? that is <laughs> yes. What were you thinking? Cause that was, you were my supposed spot. to be able to go into the game, but y'all yeah. were out of subs. And so Mia Hamm, of course it was Mia had to take over as goalie. So what was, what was your perspective of that moment in that game? Uh, I was, I mean, to be it, in my heart, I was so bummed because, you know, I yeah. absolutely, I'm like, I'm go, I'm in how you don't sub a goalkeeper. Yep. So when something like that happens, you're like, not that I'm happy. This is my got, moment. This yeah, is not that mine. I'm happy <laughs> I got a red card or anything, but I'm like, right. yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going in. Right. Um, and it was like that, like, like I got deflated in a sense of wanting to play so bad, but at the same time, it gets taken over by like, my team and it's just like who are we gonna put in and I think I was one of was like Mia put Mia in like you know like and I'm I was standing right there cheering on every save she made she looked so funny and cute in that big jersey <laughs> and she put the uh, prize gloves on and they were they were so big on her and it was just like but you know her her incredible dedication and devotion to everything and she brought it and she made some saves I mean she is she is on like the list. She she has saves. Yep, I think she had, I think she had two saves. As yep. a goalkeeper, <laughs> there are goalkeepers that have played for the national team that don't have any saves. Like yeah. <laughs> you know, like her, she had two saves. Um, and you know, it, it, that moment leaves you. You know, that's part of who we were and who we are as a group and um, as peers. We always supported each other. And as, as much as I, I knew, I played the next game, so I played the next yeah. game. But at the same time, yeah, I wanted to get in. It's like, oh, but then you're kind of like, okay, okay, what do we do? And so kind of, you know, I wasn't sitting there angry on the bench, like, right. oh, this is supposed to be my time and now not caring. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious. And um, and I, like I said, I knew I was going to play the next game. And right. you know, that was awesome too. But um, that moment. Yeah, I'll never forget it. Your first person's ever asked me about that. <laughs> what, what can't Mia Hamm do? Let's be honest. <laughs> It's true, but that's why you go to a person and you say, who are we gonna put in? But I, I swear to you, if we, I swear, and I know Mia would probably say this too, if we put any person on that team in the goal, they would have brought it too, because yeah. they, we're such competitors. It's, you know, it's ridiculous. It's <laughs> right. No, whether it was, you know, it doesn't matter. Shannon McMillan, <laughs> Tiffany Melbray, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, somebody might be like, don't put me in the goal. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> possible. But off the top of my head, I probably wouldn't say that. Or would that be? <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair that's fair we can keep it pc you know yeah <laughs> um so i gotta know though now the game has changed as you know in all sports we've seen every sport just change and evolve so i've got to know who is saskia weber's favorite or best female goalie in the country right now i have to pull out my list <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I'm like sitting here, like names, like um, follow, like flowing at me. I will. I'll give one name that I like keeping an eye on. I'm gonna say Casey okay. Murphy. I'm gonna say Casey Murphy. Cool. Um, Love that. U.S. wise, and I'm saying that yeah because she went to Rutgers because we're both from New Jersey. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's that's a good enough, that's a good enough reason for me. And so there and you go. There's your name. <laughs> and for those listening, dropping some Saskia Weber trivia knowledge on you, Saskia was the first woman to be inducted into the Hall of Fame at Rutgers University. Yes. So just round of applause for Thank Saskia you. because Huge that honor. is that is amazing. I read that and that was like one of the things about you that stood out to me the most because that not only speaks, you know, about who you are as a person, but your commitment consistently to this sport and to be recognized in that fashion. Well deserved. Yes, so, little so Saskia Weber trivia there. <laughs> yep. So I'm I'm picking Casey Murphy, sticking with Rutgers. There we go. 
<laughs> there we go. I like it. And, you know, I want to ask you, Saskia, you've mentioned travel several times in our conversation. So I'm yes. not going to let that slide. You talked about playing um, in your young career in Holland. You played in the Japanese Professional Women's yes. League. You've traveled with the women's national team. I want to know, what is your favorite place you have ever been and why? Um, that is an incredibly hard question. I've loved, <laughs> I've loved every place I've ever been. I loved living in Japan. I absolutely loved yeah. it. Um, um, I, I'm a traveler, not a tourist. I like to say that. Yeah. So I love yeah. getting immersed in the culture, um, yeah. the food, everything. Um, I was really um, happy I got to go back uh, last summer for um, MVP Pro Tour to go teach the troops kids soccer, which was amazing. amazing. And getting to see the country again, which I, I didn't know if I'd ever go back. Um, I would say um, there was a moment when I was traveling, we were taking the train from Holland to Italy and I um, woke up really early in the morning in the middle of the Swiss Alps. Wow. And I looked up and it was just like these, something you have to experience to see. Right. And I was all by myself, like everybody was asleep. I was just standing in the train window, like looking, like just my mouth on the ground. Yeah. And um, that was that was pretty incredible. I have some favorite places in the world, but that has nothing to do with soccer. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's okay. It doesn't uh, have to do uh, with soccer. Well, what Greek, are your favorite places? The Greek islands, first of all, the Cyclades are amazing to me. Yeah. Um, I had a great time in Monte Carlo. <laughs> um, so what happens in Monte Carlo stays, stays in Monte, in Monte Carlo. Carlo. <laughs> I um which it was an incredible it was actually sports we were there for the world sports awards um cool. and then um anything on the Mediterranean and yes Holland sorry because I'm half Dutch <laughs> I gotta I gotta you know I gotta do the right thing <laughs> hey you you definitely stay true to your roots I I respect that yeah. You know, you've put this on my bucket list. Mykonos and Santorini are two places that have been on my bucket list. So now I've added a couple more. But Thanks. thank you so much, Saskia. <laughs> I really appreciate you for joining us. And go ahead and tell everyone where they can follow you, reach out to you, and also where they can listen to your podcast. Because, of course, we've got to plug that here because it's so great. <laughs> um, you can reach me on all social media at um, Saskia, Weber, Saskia underscore Weber, um, Instagram, Twitter. Facebook. Yes, I still use Facebook. I like Facebook. <laughs> okay. I'm old. Um, and then you can check us out uh, three times a week, actually, Monday, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, um, 2 p.m. Pacific time at Inside the 18. Love that. Her podcast is great, y'all, if you want to know more about women's soccer. Yeah, about goalkeeping, where the sport is going, who to look out for. Yep. Um, go check it out. It's awesome. But with that, again, Saskia, thank you so much. And we'll catch you next time, everyone. Absolutely.